Our scripture reading this evening comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went up from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went up the town, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God. Congratulations to all of you. You did it. You made it through another Christmas season. Oh, wait, you're not done yet. There's still so much to do. You're running out of time and you're hoping that I keep this as brief as possible. You're fully aware that the Steelers kick off in about 30 minutes and you're trying to get home to see it. Well, I have one request of you all. Perhaps you can think of it as a Christmas present to Jesus. In this time, I ask that you let go of all that other stuff. Let it fade away from you, at least until you make it to the parking lot. Take a break from the stresses of the season and simply enjoy this worship time that we have as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Take a deep breath and know that it's all going to be okay. Now, perhaps we will be able to do this when we think about the stress that Christmas season can bring our way. But you might be saying, Pastor, have you looked out to the world lately? Have you seen what is going on? How can we push all those things away during this time? Well, yes, I have seen what is going on in the world today. And I assure you that I, too, have had concerns this year. And I, like many of you, have seen the gathering darkness in our world. We've been through another year dealing with the pandemic. To add to that, we've had a particularly nasty strain of the flu and RSV that has decided to join the party this year. I've witnessed as our brothers and sisters around the world, especially those in the Ukraine, have suffered and fought for their very lives. I've watched as the people of our country have decided to put politics at the forefront of their identity and allowed it to split them away from others, including their own families. I have struggled, as many of you have, with the rising costs of everything and how people have needed more and more help this year in order to feed their families. I've seen the tragedy and loss of life that has occurred throughout our country and even in our small community due to senseless violence. 
I know that when we look at the world and what it is offering us these days, we see a lot of darkness. I have seen this all with my own eyes, and yet I still have hope. You see, I have a hope for a world where my children can grow up in peace. I have a hope for a world where no one goes to bed hungry at night. I have a hope for a world where we put aside our differences, whatever they may be, and work together. I have this hope because of a little baby that was born over 2,000 years ago and the man that he grew up to be. I have this hope because of Jesus. Because of him, there is always a light in the darkness. Have you ever found yourself in a place that is truly dark? I mean, a place where if you were to hold your hand up in front of your face, you wouldn't even be able to see it. For me, I think of a trip my family took to Carlsbad Caverns, a, a large cave, and in one room, if they didn't have it lit up, there was no light to be seen. It was completely pitch dark, the darkest I had ever seen anything. But the amazing thing about being in a place that is dark is it doesn't take a huge amount of light in order for you to be able to see. It only takes the smallest amount of light for you to begin to be able to see. Just a little beam breaking through can make all the difference. And that is what Jesus Christ is in our world of darkness. He is the light. Now sometimes we feel him and we feel as though he shines brighter than a thousand suns. And sometimes we feel as if it's just that small beam breaking through. But he is always indeed there to guide us and break through the darkness in our lives. Now the wonderful thing about the light of Christ is it does not grow dimmer the more that it is shared. Whenever we as his followers carry that light to others, it only grows. That, brothers and sisters, is why I have hope in the darkness. Whenever this world seems to be getting darker and darker, I am reminded of a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. and it goes like this. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So in a world where we see darkness all around us, I urge you to focus on the light, the light that shines through Jesus. Now during this time of year, during Advent, we talk about hope, peace, joy, and love. And each of these things are what Jesus brings into our lives because of his birth. We have the hope that he can make this world a better place. We have a hope that we are part of his kingdom. We seek peace because it is what he has taught us to do. We know that we cannot have peace by forcing our beliefs onto others, but we can have peace by living our lives in the ways that he has called us to. And in that way, we can bring peace to others as they find their way to Jesus. We have joy, joy in the darkest of times. We know that the troubles might last for the night, but the joy comes in the morning. We know that one day we will joyfully walk beside Jesus because we know that he will return for all his believers. And we have love. Not just any love, but the greatest love the world has ever known. We have love because God chose to send Jesus to us on that first Christmas night. We have a love that is so pure that the whitest snow could never compare to it. We have a love that is made to drive out hate. The love of Jesus Christ that he has for all of us. So we have all these wonderful things in our lives, even the midst of the, in the midst of the darkness of this world. The question then is, what are we going to do with them? Are we going to keep these gifts for ourselves? Are they gifts that just have our name on them? 
I know tomorrow in our house there will be a lot of whose name is on what and which one does this go to and hey, don't touch that, that one's mine. But no, these gifts are given for us to share. We find ourselves in the same situation that those shepherds did on the very first Christmas night, sitting in a world that is dark, watching over the things that we are called to watch over. For them, it was their sheep. For us, our families, our work, our relationships, and a hundred other things that enter into our lives. But then, out of the darkness, they experience a bright light, an angel coming to tell them the good news, that unto them a Savior has been born. Have you let the light of the good news come into your life? Have you let it drive out the darkness? The shepherds go and see the child, the one that's been born to save the world. Now, do you think they just stopped there? Do you think they went and said, oh, wow, that's really neat. And then they went about their days of their lives. No, we're told that they didn't. And I don't think it would have been possible for them to do. See, they went and they told everyone that they knew about the good news. I think they went and told everyone about the light and the darkness that they had seen. You see, we are just like those shepherds. We have seen the light and the darkness. We have seen the wonderful things that Jesus has done in our lives. So my question for you is this. Are you going to keep it to yourself? Or are you going to share it with the world? I said earlier, when we share the love and the light of Jesus that he's given to us, it doesn't matter how we start, even if it's small, it doesn't stay small. It only grows. And if we hope to drive out the darkness in this world, that is exactly what we must do. We must live our lives in ways that shows others the light of Jesus Christ. We must do so not only in this season, but in all seasons. Right now is the time, and right now is the place to start. In a short while, we will sing our traditional carol, Silent Night. We'll light up our candles and we'll hold them up high. And as we sing about it this evening, I want you to think about those lights going out into the world of darkness. How they can help us to bring a world full of light. So as we move on from this season celebrating the birth of Christ, I pray that each and every one of you will let his light shine through you into this world. It would be the greatest gift we could ever hope to give to the one that has given us all so much. Amen.